Uh, hi everyone, my name is Patrick. I work for Red Hat uh, as a software engineer for the community platform engineering team. And my colleagues, Lenka and David, were supposed to be here with me, to present with me, but unfortunately they could not make it. So today I would like to talk to you about authorizing OpenShift hosted projects to community members in Fedora. Uh, and let's begin. So first, I would like to go over some background about how all of this came about. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a thing called CommuniShift, which was a community-facing OpenShift cluster for the community to like run and uh, deploy uh, and test apps, experiment and learn, learn on. Uh, and uh, this cluster was retired uh, back in 2020, I think, um, in a data center move. Um, and then in Q3 uh, of uh, 2022, CPE was tasked with uh, solving a couple of the blockers that were holding up the release of the replacement cluster. There were a couple of areas that we have had to solve. First one was uh, self-service administration of projects uh, with uh, little or no added work for the infra team because we had a lot of uh, tickets being opened uh, regularly that were requesting access to the systems. Uh, another one uh, was that we needed a way uh, to sync the Fedora account system and the cluster, and we needed this to happen uh, automatically. And the last one uh, is that the Fedora account system API uses Kerberos authentication, uh, so we needed a key tab. Okay. As a quick aside here, I would like to uh, briefly describe uh, what an Ansible operator is. So it is a Kubernetes native application that consists of two parts. Uh, first one is a small chunk of code that just handles the interface between uh, OpenShift and the operator. And uh, the second one is a container that receives events from that code and then can run Ansible playbooks uh, as is required. Uh, these operators can then be managed by the operator framework, which is like an open source uh, toolkit. Uh, and it can be managed in an effective uh, and automated manner. So what advantages uh, does creating your operators with Ansible offer? Uh, first off, it's easier to write uh, as Ansible and Operator SDK, the project that I mentioned, uh, abstract away uh, all of the difficult parts of writing an operator, uh, such as having to know relatively low-level programming languages like Golang or being familiar with Kubernetes internals. And you also have immediate access uh, to any module that Ansible can run, including custom modules that you can write, which is what we also did as part of the initiative. Solution to the problem that I was described, uh, describing earlier was to write an Ansible operator named CommuniShift Authorization, which connects to the Fedora Account System API, retrieves all of the CommuniShift named groups and the group membership, then connects to the OpenShift API uh, and syncs it. You can configure how often it should reconcile. We went with 20 minutes. Second operator that I would like to talk about is fast to discourse, uh, we, because once we had the CommuniShift authorization operator done, we realized that this approach could be used for more than just that one service. Um, and fast to discourse syncs uh, the again from the Fedora account system. It syncs the group membership to Fedora discussion, which is a discourse instance that we have and like kind of forums where you can uh, talk to members of the Fedora community. Okay, so here is a little graphic of how it works. Uh, on the left, uh, we have the Fedora account system, which is our single source of truth uh, regarding users uh, and group membership. And um, it allows us fine-grained access 
uh, to various systems that we have uh, in the Fedora community. Uh, group sponsors uh, can add and remove uh, members here from their group. Uh, and what we lacked uh, was a mechanism uh, to sync these changes uh, to the various systems that we have, uh, which is where the operator comes into play. It's the sync in the middle. Um, so once we have the information in the Fedora account system, uh, the operators retrieve it uh, and sync it to Fedora discussion or community shift groups respectively, uh, as we are talking about two separate operators. Uh, this approach could also be used in the future for any other service and I reckon we will do it again at some point. So on the last slide here, I have a little demo. Um, so on the left, uh, you can see the web UI of FAS, uh, where project admins uh, can add or remove uh, users from their groups. Uh, and on the right, you can see we are interacting uh, with uh, the community shift cluster and uh, retrieving the groups. Uh, and in the give here, uh, bottom left, uh, I am being uh, removed from and then re-added to the community shift admins group. Uh, the operator then picks up the changes and syncs it to the cluster. Uh, and the users, once this is done, can then log in to OpenShift and have access to their project, at least in theory, uh, as the cluster has not yet been fully re-released. So this was a lightning talk, so it was just a brief overview of uh, what we did, but if anyone is interested in digging into the uh, technical details of how we did it. Uh, here are a couple of useful links. Uh, the first two contain the source code of the actual operators. Uh, this is all from me. Thank you for your attention and have a pleasant rest of the day.